You know what? I set up all my borax ant baits around 7.30 in the evening. But when I checked on the first one just 20 minutes later, we can already see a lot of ants feasting on the solution, which I deliberately spilled on the flooring. Hopefully, this is enough to entice the others to crawl up the cup into the holes and access the rest of the solution. At this point, I'm sure of one thing, that the bait works as far as attracting ants. But the real question is, will it eventually kill some of them, most of them, or all of them in the days to come? And I will reveal the results shortly, but in the meantime, I'll now walk you through the exact steps to prepare our borax bait for cockroaches. Like I had explained earlier. Oh, hang on. You do realize that this is the second video of a two-part series, right? Okay, if you haven't watched part one yet, I highly suggest that you do so now because in that video, I explained all about the downside of using pesticides, what resurgence is, why I suggest borax as a viable alternative, the reasons behind the containers I'm using, preparing the ingredients and materials, how to calculate mixing ratios, and exactly where to set up baits for ants. For you to fully appreciate and understand the information I'm about to show in the rest of this video, please arm yourself with the context part 1 offers. Don't worry, in part 1, I've included a link at the end of that video and in the description that will lead you back here in part 2. In the meantime, please go to part 1 by clicking on the info card on the upper right or if you don't see it, clicking on the link in the description below. See you in a moment. Okay, welcome back to part 2. You ready to continue? Let's go. Roaches that get in contact with borax won't die. They must ingest it. But borax will stick to their legs via static electricity. Later, once they've returned to their hiding place, they will groom or clean themselves by eating the white powder. And since roaches also groom one another, they effectively spread the poison across their entire nest. However, like ants, roaches are not attracted to borax. But did you know the top 5 food sources that never fail to draw them in? They love cheese because it's rich in protein and fat. They love grease because it's also high in fat. They love meat because it's a great source of protein. They go crazy over starch found in bread, potatoes, and even in cardboard. And finally, they are most captivated by, wait for it, sugar. They can smell it from anywhere. So we're still gonna mix sugar and borax to create our bait. The good news is, we don't need to mix them in water because we need our bait to be dry. An even better news is that the mixing ratio is much simpler. One part borax and one part sugar. So if I wanna fill up 10 40 milliliter cups, which total 400 milliliters, then all I need is to divide that total by two. 200 milliliters of borax and 200 milliliters of sugar. The important thing is to really mix the two ingredients evenly so that for every particle of sugar that sticks to their legs or that they ingest, a particle of borax comes with it. And once we see the borax and sugar hardly distinguishable from each other, we pour the mix into our specimen cups. I then lightly tap each cup against the table to dislodge lumps and flatten the surface evenly. Now, we set these cups at strategic places around the house. By the way, notice that I didn't bore any hole around these cups nor cover them. We're gonna set them as is, so it's very important to educate every member of your household, especially the kids, what these cups contain and what they are for. Unlike ants, cockroaches do not gather and form a persistent trail. So we're gonna place these baits where they are known to frequent, cold and damp areas. The prime locations would be inside the bathroom, under the sinks, above the sinks, near outdoor air conditioning units, areas where there's grease nearby, and so on. Okay, just to be clear, I'm not optimistic that we'll see cockroaches lying dead out in the open after they ingest our borax-laced sugar bait since roaches instinctively writhe to death in cold, dark places, often within their nests. So I'm not sure if I'd be able to get any footage as the borax goes to work. 
But a good indicator that the bait is working is if we observe a significant drop in their numbers in a week or two. So for this experiment, I also asked everyone in the household not to spray any insecticide in the next two to three weeks so we can have accurate results. Speaking of results, let's see how our ant baits have been doing at various points in time. 18 hours and 7 minutes after setting the cups, we can see that this bait has actually attracted black ants instead of red ants. Just the same, the bait is doing what it's supposed to, being a bait. Now I'm not sure why the black ants are moving around so frantically. Are they excited to let the others know what they found here? I hope so. Inside the cup, we can see several of them collecting the brown liquid and using the holes around the cup as passageways. Over here was the first location of our first cup. But I found it a bit difficult to film since it was too deep in the corner, so I moved it to this side. The first thing I noticed is that the ant trails are not as thick anymore. The second thing I noticed is that a lot of them are already dead. This ring that you see here, it's not dirt or soil. It's the bodies of dead ants that feasted around a small puddle of solution I intentionally spilled several hours ago. For some reason, their carcasses have turned darker, even black. And over here are the carcasses of ants that I think died more recently. This ant trail on the wall has drastically thinned out and the ants are now crawling sluggishly. I hope most of them can still make it back to wherever their colony is so they can spread the poison there. By the way, there are no more ant trails crossing the width of the garage floor all the way to our trash can. Looks like everyone is now being drawn to the bait, which is exactly what we hoped for. This third bait has also started attracting ants. Now I'm not sure if they belong to the same colony, but it doesn't really matter. If there are many colonies inside and around our home, I'm hoping that the baits would attract and exterminate all of them. Even this pillar by our large trash bins is already clear of ants, because all of them have gathered up here instead. That is one busy hole right there. Perhaps I should make the holes a little bigger next time, so they don't create a bottleneck. One day, three hours and 49 minutes later, the ants seem to be crawling all over the place, as if they're confused which direction to go. And on this wall, there's barely an ant trail left. Now, I took this footage right after a heavy rainfall. And yes, there was also quite a strong wind. And after a lot of their comrades were washed away, a few ants have returned to resume the harvesting. But what I would like to point out is that all the cups remained in place during the storm and our borax solution inside hasn't been diluted by rainwater. And this is precisely why we bore the holes on the sides of the cups and not on top, so rain won't be able to get inside them. Meanwhile, this outdoor kitchen area has a roof above it, so there wasn't any risk of rainwater getting here. But what is notable is how many ants this bait has already attracted and killed on the spot. See that black lump clinging behind the cup? Those are ant carcasses. And by now, the holes are so clogged up with more dead ants. I'm not sure if more ants can still squeeze through. Also, there are lesser ants traversing this wall compared to 28 hours ago. Just look at the gap between those ants along the trail. After 4 days, 17 hours and 6 minutes, our first cup looks like this. I'm actually surprised that some ants are still at it despite the fact that they have to squeeze through dead bodies when passing through the holes. What's also interesting is that there are considerably few of them left, and they look more confused than ever. Oh hang on, some are back at our trash bin. Is the bait losing its attracting power? Meanwhile, this cup is beginning to collect more dead ants inside and around it. Over here, some ants had taken refuge underneath this can of bird feed, but eventually died too. For the last three months, hundreds of ants were always squeezing through the can's lid and harvesting the bird feed inside. But that all stopped when we placed this bait nearby. Either they found this bait more attractive or they have grown too weak to harvest food from the can. This bait is still doing its thing. At first glance, its skill rate might not look impressive but wait till you see this. This steel support that the ants have been using to crawl up the concrete roof tiles is now peppered with hundreds of ant corpses. Down below is where our biodegradable trash bins are located. And in the past, this was one of the most ant-infested areas despite regularly spraying it with insecticide. 
Today, resurgence is no longer an issue. And on this wall of our dirty kitchen, I can now count with my fingers the ants that are still on it. This bait has done a remarkable job in reducing their numbers, so much so that its four holes are now completely blocked by dead ants. Whenever this happens, it's as simple as washing off the sides with running water and tapping it a few times to dislodge the ant clog from the holes. This way, we'll be able to restore the bait's effectiveness and efficiency. Just the same, I think it's a good idea for me to make the holes a little bit larger next time. And after 9 days, 17 hours, and 42 minutes, it is now indisputable that our borax ant baits work. I won't even provide you with commentary. I'll let the results speak for themselves. And with these results, even if I don't see the condition of the ant colonies themselves that had been thriving within our premises, I can infer with a degree of certainty that they are either all dead or dying. And the few survivors that continue to be attracted by our baits will soon be too. At this point, I could have stopped the experiment and packed up because I already achieved what I set out to do. With cheap borax, sugar, and water, we have practically eliminated our ant infestation and resurgence in just under 10 days, what expensive cans of insecticide could not in the last 3 to 4 months. But before we leave this ant experiment and move on to termites, I was curious about one final thing. How long can a 40 milliliter borax bait last out in the open? The answer? At least a month. Because 36 days, 18 hours, and 16 minutes later, this cup is still not empty, despite being subjected under sunlight, rain, wind, and of course ants. And based on its long-lasting performance, a borax ant bait using this type of container is superior and more cost-effective than a can of insecticide. But is borax equally effective against cockroaches? I will reveal the results shortly but in the meantime, I'll now walk you through the exact steps to prepare our borax bait for termites. Just with ants and cockroaches, we need to trick termites to ingest borax. But this time, we won't even need sugar to bait them. Instead, we'll apply borax to the most likely reason why they infested your home in the first place, wood. Wood contains a common organic compound called cellulose. Termites can break down the cellulose fibers found in wood, from which they derive much-needed nutrients. In fact, they are one of the few creatures that rely on wood as a primary food source. Now, if you think it's hard to trace where ants and cockroaches are coming from, it's even harder with termites. Because these critters don't typically hang out in the open. Instead, they burrow deep into wood and build passageways, eating the material from the inside out. Therefore, it's highly suggested that the concentration of borax solution should not exceed 2%. This much smaller dosage is critical probably because termites have a weaker constitution against borax even if they are relatively bigger than ants. We don't want to kill them too fast too soon. In other words, they must have just enough strength left to return to their colony and contaminate their queen with the borax poison. Remember, if you get rid of the queen, then you get rid of the entire colony. Okay, 2% borax in water translates to 1 part borax and 50 parts water. And the easiest delivery method is through a spray bottle. So, if I wanted to mix borax and water in this 600 milliliter container, then it would be 12 milliliters of borax and 588 milliliters of water. Now, my 50 milliliter measuring cup is way too big to eyeball 12 milliliters of borax. So instead, I'm gonna use a tablespoon. Using an online converter like inchcalculator.com, 12 milliliters is equal to 0.811 tablespoon, or about 3 fourths of a tablespoon. Then, we pour in our 588 milliliters of water and mix thoroughly. Just use water at room temperature here. While you can use hot or boiling water, do not pour it directly into the bottle because the bottle might explode in your face due to water vapor pressure trapped inside. Because now, you need to shake the bottle to completely dissolve the borax. And that's it! All you need to do is spray this solution on any wood surface in and around your home. 
and the order of priority should be first any area where you have spotted termites or their actual colony second any area where you have observed decaying wood or surfaces with tiny pinholes or exit holes and third any area where wood is exposed to the elements but this is as far as I can take you in this video since I don't have any results to show you even if I wanted to why because we simply don't have termites within our premises the best I can do is suggest watching other YouTube videos that show actual results of borax being used against termites. There are tons out there. Just the same, if you do have a termite infestation right now, this 2% solution can do wonders in just 3 to 7 days. I'd say those are still impressive results for something so cheap versus a 12,000 peso professional pest control service. Speaking of results, let's see how our cockroach baits have been doing at various points in time. Three days after setting the cups, we saw no change in the number of cockroaches scurrying around in different areas at different times in the day. If anything, they seemed more brazen than ever. Maybe they haven't discovered the baits yet? It was only after five days we observed a significant drop in their numbers. At this point, we were lucky if we spotted one or two throughout the entire day. And what's weird was, half the time, we only saw young roaches or nymphs. Could the adult roaches be already dead in some cold and dark hiding places? And now the smaller roaches are forced to come out in the open and look for food themselves? By the 10th day and onwards, there was zero cockroach inside and outside our home. At this point, I could already infer that the borax baits were doing their job because of three intersecting facts. One. We have not sprayed insecticide, not even once. 2. The borax and sugar level in most of the cups were going down over time, so something must be consuming them, well, aside from ants for this particular bait. And 3. The number of cockroaches we observed daily went from a lot all the way down to zero. But I wasn't satisfied with the absence of roaches as the evidence to conclude that borax works. I wanted to capture on video a dead roach I can visually link with the baits. And after 16 days, 18 hours, and 31 minutes, I hit the jackpot. Indisputable proof that this roach was killed, well, in the process of being killed, by the borax bait right beside it. And it even took a dump in the cup. Now, whether it was before, during, or after consuming the content, who knows? And it wasn't a fluke because even after 26 days, 21 hours, and 50 minutes, the borax baits are still half full and literally stopping cockroaches dead in their tracks.